Guess who's back? Back again. Yes, it is I, back from funerals and being sick. And ready to do another video here with a review of something special. <clears throat> but before I get started with that, I just want to say thank you to all the well wishes that I received. I really appreciated them. So thank you so much. Let's get going. Hello fellow Novians, my name is Rob and welcome to another episode in our ship review series here in Dual Universe as we take a look at the Eclipse Mark III by Ryan Pride, which is much better than Mark I and Mark II just because it's Mark III. <laughs> so we're looking at the Asteroid Hunter Eclipse here. It is a DSAT equipped, very cool looking medium core spaceship capable of lifting um, 1,200 kiloliters of weight in sp into orbit. Uh, I don't know what that is in kilotons, but uh, it does have quite a few uh, large containers in the ship for you to transport stuff and then bring it down to, uh, you know, one of the planets to sell it or whatnot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior here. We've got the usual uh, adjusters in cool uh, sunken in there, so they're not just like slapped on the outside. I like that. We've got vertical boosters underneath here. Looks cool, recessed like that. Very nice voxel work. Ooh, yeah, that is very, oh, that's a retro rocket break. Holy crap. I usually hate how those things look, but those actually look pretty darn cool the way they're set in there with the uh, little cuts I have no idea how he did that but uh, that is really good voxel work really cool there's a lot of smoothing going on here I mean look how smooth that is right there that transition it's almost kind of curved and very smoothed out so there's a lot of really cool stuff going on with this ship oh there's a cargo container down here for easy access and uh, in the back, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and Johns. Um, and I like that honeycomb look on the back there. That's very nicely done. That's polished white aluminum. And these are all advanced military atmospheric engine larges. And we've got an advanced military space engine extra large. And according to the stats, this thing will get up to max speed in space in a approximately one minute and 55 seconds so not too shabby all right um more adjusters we've got some compact ailerons there for uh lift i'm assuming a little bit i don't see any wings well, do we have wings oh that's an armored window there that's a cool use of the armored window and uh, we've got some other stuff in here. We've got the engines poking out. We've got a bunch of atmospheric brakes on the front here. Some more atmospheric brakes over here. And uh, we've got the uh, the cool use of landing gear there. And uh, it's very interesting. It's kind of boxy, but not boxy at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like... Millennium Falcon cool use of boxiness. I suppose it's cool use. Uh, if we hop up on top here, we've got more adjusters. We've got the DSAT very nicely sunk down in there. Oh, and we have a large shield generator also in here. So this thing is kitted out very nicely. We've got more atmospheric brakes on the top here. And uh, 
Ah, an elevator on the top so you can get up here from the inside. Ah, very nicely done voxel work, but wait till you see the inside. Oh, and we've got some uh, some maneuvering uh, medium space engines here for uh, downward movement. For landings and stuff. So I do believe this also comes in a space version, which includes more cargo and some other stuff. Uh, but you need to contact the creator to uh, take a look. So let's go ahead and hop on the inside here. Come on. Right away, we've got uh, ship info button here. You can find several uh, info buttons in the ship. Boop. So, oh, there's some there's some weight uh, stats. St touch screens are initialized by pressure plates. Ship stats with level five engine boots rest at four. Uh, in Alioth with level five piloting skills, you can lift thirty six. Uh, so. Three kilotons, three thirty six hundred kilotons. Wouldn't that be thirty six hundred ton? Uh, uh, mm, uh, mm. Uh, confusion. Um, <laughs> so obviously, in space, this has no glitched elements, and uh, in space, you wouldn't worry about weight very much. So, things and stuff. I think he met 3,600 tons. So, it would be 3.6 kilotons. Otherwise, this thing lifts 3,600 million tons. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead. We've got these uh, custom... Uh, screens here with some really that's really cool um they're just custom screens they look they look like they're part of the ship not like it's a screen i like that um we've got a teleporter i mean a elevator oh go straight to the bridge okay so you have easy access to the bridge from either side and uh if we walk down the back here um, we also have another info panel. What's this one? Ooh, look at that. It has a Lua logistics overview. That is pretty cool with a little graph there. Never seen anybody do like that much work on this, on, on like information on how the Lua is set up. That is, uh, above and beyond right there. Um, we've, is this the back or the front? I think I might be backwards. Nope, this is the back. <laughs> Bathroom, living room. I like that I have that picture somewhere on my ships. Uh, we got a, our bedroom here. <laughs> Intercom, that's cool. And uh, boop, one touch, door open, door closed. That's nice, very nice. And uh, very spacious bathroom here. Ooh, call me. That's uh kinky. <laughs> so shower, sink, toilets, two toilets. We we got a stand up toilet and a sit down toilet. Cause why not, right? And another oh, okay, it goes back to the uh the ones that go to the bridge. So very fast travel options here. Cool, cool, cool. We've got the uh, surrogate VR station over here. And uh, VR pad here. And this just goes right into the cockpit. So I think on both sides, it's pretty much the same up front. But look at these uh, look at these walls on the interior. Like, this is really nice. If you've ever worked with uh, interior stuff, like getting these, these uh, walls and floors and everything to line up just this way. Um, especially on the uh, outer curves here where it's inverted. That is uh, very impressive. Like this interior is just, I mean, it says spaceship to you, right? It's like, this is a spaceship. Oh, what do we got up here? Oh, that's the shield generator. Well, that's, that's cool how he's got it set up there. I like that. And uh, 
I assume this also has a warp drive somewhere. Okay, we've got our res node over here. And, uh, oh, yep, there's the warp drive right in the bridge. And we've also got a uh, advanced array space radar. And the emergency controller, we've got, uh, looks like, um, Saga HUD. Um, the container relay is right there. Oh, and that's where the DSAT is, so it's right in front of the cockpit seat, so you can actually click on it. You don't get any good space views in here, but it is really easy to activate the, uh, the DSAT and do all your asteroid scanning. So that is very cool. Very good, uh, very good placement, I suppose, is what the word I'm looking for. Okay. And what do we also have here? Customization info. Uh, containers can be added to the side pods and to the back to bring it to a total of 10 uh, large containers. And the XS on the bottom is only for quick access and can be removed. Engines can be swapped. No interference. Um, check out brake power. Blah, blah, blah. And some other stuff. I do uh, like all the info there. It's pretty cool. Oh, and there's the uh, your space fuel tank. Two space fuel tanks. Um, where is the Atmo tanks? Somewhere. Somewhere in the ship. Oh, that's cool. Cool use of the uh, modular seats back here. I like that. You can go ahead and... Uh, just take a seat. All right, and then one other thing I'll mention here is if you go over to the uh, where the f the uh, shield generator is here, if you jump up here, these are kind of service hatches, so you can get to uh, the interiors and all that good stuff. Cool, cool. <laughs> I like that. So this is where the uh, cargo crates are right here. And uh, obviously there's room for some other ones back here as well. You've got another one there. And it uh, looks like here's your uh, atmospheric fuel tanks up here as well. And uh, yeah, we're standing on top of the corridors and you could pretty much get to uh, everything in here for maintenance. But yeah, there's some room for some more cargo in here as well. So, lots of stuff. Easy access is always very good, right? Um, now, let's get back out of here and uh, get to the flying portion of the test all right because i know that's what you all want to see on this one i do like this bridge just very very good detail work so the question is how do you turn on the shield from in here. Oh, this is actually readable. I mean, this is actually actual stats for the fuel tanks and everything. At first, I thought it was just like a display for, for uh, to look cool, but yeah, it, it actually has all the fuel information and cargo information. Ah, that is very cool. Um, does this say anything about the accessible over service holes, left, right, shield generator? Hmm. 
Okay then, let's go ahead and hop in the seat and we'll get started. So, very cool look from the outside. Oh, I did activate the ramp. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, you can click on these things while you're in the seat. So, that's a very good feature right here. And, like I said, you can click on the deset without having to get out of the seat. So, good stuff. Let's see. Is this the old version? It might be. I think this is the one without the brake toggle option. Okay, well, oh, no, the brakes are clickable, so that's good. Okay, so let's go ahead and lift off, and this thing does remind me very much of like a uh, Star Wars-ish type spaceship, right? Full throttle, away we go. Whoop, it's trying to auto-level me. I don't like that. Wow, man, look at that thing pick up speed. That is very nice. We'll level off here. Oh, yeah, this thing is now, it's not a, uh, not arch, it doesn't have a burn speed limiter. <laughs> So 20% throttle seems like a good spot to sit. Obviously, if you had some cargo, you'd have to do a little bit more uh, stuff there, right? So let's do the usual. We'll go ahead and turn on the uh, trajectory. And uh, how well does it do with a regular just yaw turn there? It comes around very slowly. Very slowly. It did get off the ground pretty well, so there must be some wings somewhere in here, I'm assuming, maybe. Let's try a bank turn. That keeps up pretty well. Add a little bit of cargo to that. You might have to be a little bit more cautious when doing your turns but otherwise it maneuvers very nicely let's see how fast my brakes work Boop. oh yeah good atmo brakes <laughs> almost stalled it out there so can't complain about that let the d-set just hanging out the top there like a big magnet that's what it reminds me of, like a giant magnet on the top there. Alrighty, so let's throttle up and we'll go into space. Let's see if the, uh, yep, with no cargo, it picks up speed just fine. You might have seen a little drop off there in my, uh, my speed going straight up like that. 
Um, but the extra large space engine actually warmed up and caught in enough time. I wouldn't try that with weight, but if you're using this for asteroid hunting, your weight is going to be mostly when you come down to the planet, not lifting um, weight, because I assume you're going to want to bring it down to uh, Alioth or Mattis or wherever your base is and drop it off for your, uh, for your machinery or um, sell it on the market. Uh, but look how fast that speed is picking up right there. Very nice. And if we did have uh, some DSAT stuff, we would be able to start homing in on the uh, asteroids. Um, I did not see any stats on like how much fuel time this thing has. Um... It is, it's eating a bit of fuel, not too much. And once you get up to speed, you, your engine's pretty much cut off and, and you just use your momentum anyway, right? So, not bad. Atmo feels pretty good. We didn't use that much. Not bad at all. Not too shabby. All right, so let's go ahead. We're at the speed of uh, 16,000 kilometers per hour. So let's see how fast we can stop here with our space brakes. More than 100 uh, per second, so. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. We that pattern on the back really just like stands out where the engines are shiny. He's very good. Yes, yes, very good. And we're stopped. So let me go ahead and open up my bookmarks here and go back to base. And we're down there. So let's see how this thing does on re-entry. Woo! Very spinny. It moves very well in space, too. Like, the adjusters are in very good positions, and I love that, that roll is great. It takes a little second to stop, but it's still great. I like that doesn't drift or anything else you got some good things going on there bark 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 here we go again flying in the space that should be the uh, the song for the space core <laughs> all right we're coming back in here uh, one thing I want to watch out for is my uh, my landing because I don't actually let's let's just throttle up to like ten percent just so I can keep that warmed up in case I need it. Get our speed down here. And uh, I don't know if, if we're going to have what kind of landing here, right? So it might be a brake landing more than a wing uh, pickup here. But we've got some forward momentum. We'll see how this goes.
I'm going to be watching that line right there. Ah, came up just fine. Granted, it came up when we were at like 2300 instead of like 4000, but it did what it needed to do. So without any weight, it comes in just fine. Um, with some weight, you might have to be extra special careful and uh, try to do more of a brake landing than uh, or relying on your wings to uh, pick you back up once you hit the atmosphere. So not bad, not bad at all. And uh, honestly, if I had one of these, I would probably go for the space only version um, just because I don't really have a need to bring these ships back into um, into orbit. I can do all my transfers at the uh, space station and then use the uh, the space elevator to come back down. All right, so that is about it for this, for the ship. Um, I will put the information information in the, huh, the door didn't open on the little touchpad thing. Okay, well, yeah, whatever. Um, that's the only thing I would say is this could use like a button, one of those toggle buttons by the door to uh, just open them up and do the force field in case you forget to uh, open them up from the bridge or the bridge thing doesn't work. All right, let's try this again. So if you're interested in this ship, I will put the link in the uh, description there and... Uh, along with the Discord information for Ryan Pride and the link to the DU Creators page. If you are interested in this ship, the BP price is $40 million and the token price is $110 million. But I will say that is probably a bargain uh, for this build. It is very nice, handles very nice, flies very nice. I would probably go for the space-only version, um, maybe slap on another couple space engines here, uh, maybe change this out to a maneuver, uh, just so it eats less fuel. And, uh, yeah. Is it maneuver? The yellow ones? I think this is the yellow ones. Um, but I digress. So that is about it. Uh, overall, I give this ship a hefty thumbs up. I really do like the styling and everything else. And uh, you know what they say, you do buy with your eyes, right? Um, especially the interior. I think the interior is my favorite part of this ship. Just very smooth, um, very nice lines, etc., etc. If you know what I mean, right? Oh, wait, is those wings? Is those wings? Hey, hey, hey. Those is the wings. Okay, so there are wings on this thing. A good amount. All right. Um, still, would I would err on the side of caution, so more brake landing than uh, than trying to get your wings to catch you if you do have a heavy load, because it did drop about 2,000 uh, kilometers before it did catch the, uh, the fake wind, or whatever you want to call it. And that is it for me. If you have a ship you would like reviewed, please let me know. I would be more than happy to do it now that I am back and ready to start doing these videos again. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does really make a difference for small YouTube creators like myself and any of your other uh, people that you watch on the tubes. 
the tubes. Is that what the people say? I don't think that's what people say. So anyway, I will leave it there for today. As always, I will see you out there in space. Stay safe, my friends.